Mike McConville here one more time, Stratford, Ontario, Canada. So I've opted to actually put a brand new ebony fingerboard on here. So it's not just on cutting the replacement fingerboard to match, but I'm also going to put a proper radius on it. The, fi the fingerboard that was on there had been sanded incorrectly and there was a you know seven and a quarter inch telecaster radius on it. So I, the bridge was uh, is split along the bridge pins. Uh, it was very carefully removed and I made a ebony replacement. Uh, also inside the uh, bridge plate is pretty chewed up so I opt to go for I have a very thin plate so that will act as a very hard veneer uh, going over top of the original bridge plate and uh, just sort of strengthen it up so those ball ends don't kind of chew through it uh, the idea is to restore the structural integrity and obviously respect the acoustic sensitivity so you want to make it stronger but you don't want to add any mass so everything has to be done very carefully so that you don't overbuild using this original fingerboard as a template uh, I've made a brand new ebony fingerboard that will I've made it slightly oversized now, I'll work that down a little bit at a time until we get a perfect match all the way along the taper. This top actually has quite a bit of radius. Can you see that? It's very slightly dished in. Now the foot of this bridge was sanded to an 18 foot spherical radius for a perfect match. What I have there are three lengths of hardwood blocks that have been jointed dead flat. There's two-sided tape on those blocks, and then there's leather attached to that two-sided tape. I will then put another piece of two-sided tape, and I will put the various grits that I need from 80 to 120 to 180 to chase the radius onto the fingerboard of this Martin guitar. The dividers were spread out to 18 inches, checked against that rule, and then that arc was struck across that tongue depressor and then we proceeded to the sander to sand it down to the line. I'm going to hold it against the edge of this sander and I am going to sand down to the line. So there you go, there's my 18 inch radius gauge. Now I'm ready to move to the next stage. This radius gauge ensured that I kept a consistent radius across the width of the fingerboard as I leveled it along its length. So I'm going to start 80 grit sandpaper on the blocks that I just explained, slip a leather, it, it'll flex to find the radius we need. You'll see how quickly we do this. The fingerboard was attached with two-sided tape to the solid maple block to ensure a perfectly flat surface when gluing the fingerboard to the next surface. The whole reason I made a replacement fingerboard was to put the majority of the frets in before the fingerboard is glued to the surface of the neck. These frets were driven into that ebony fingerboard while it was backed up with that solid maple block. It was only the first and thirteenth fret slots that were left open to allow for indexing pins to hold the fingerboard in perfect alignment during the gluing process. And the intersection of the neck to body junction needs to retain its strength and rigidity. It has a lot to do with the tone of the guitar and the sustain. I'm putting, I'm sending home that 13th fret. Uh, when I send that fret home, it's basically backed up with uh, about 20 pounds of buckshot in those leather bags. In this case, it's backed up with 15 pounds of buckshot. Uh, just resting on, on the uh, mini neck assembly. And I just use a maple dowel and just five hammer blows across that fret. One, two, three, four, five. Now that's starting. I haven't seeded it yet. One, five. One, two, three, four, five. And that is it. That's seated. As I finish this fill for, with lacquer stick, I put a little tongue depressor tape to the top to avoid uh, marking up the top when I'm doing this job. So this is our new fingerboard, one solid piece of ebony end to end. We've restored all of the structural integrity of that neck to body junction. I mean, you know, this is like I mentioned in other videos. If you do your job correctly, 
it should look like the guitar's never been touched. I just put a little blob on there at each, each fret. Now I'll go over top of it. I've got the hot knife and we'll just let that melt and flow right in. You can see it. I can relax, concentrate on my work, knowing the guitar is not going to slip or wobble and or be crushed or marred. You know online you'll see pictures of people when they put the frets in they have like a a one inch overhang <laughs> on the outside of the fret. So first of all you're wasting 30% of your fret wire but more importantly than that is uh, when you go to clip off that overhang you're, you're loosening the fret at, at the place where it is most likely to loosen which is that outside edge. Actually these, these fret ends are actually cut very close to almost final tolerance and I even take it one step further and buff the ends so that when I do end up doing my edge dress there's almost no resistance to that file to bring. There's no way I'm going to loosen the frets up on the outside edge. Now that the frets have been leveled, edge dressed and filled both sides of the, of the new fingerboard We'll flip it on its back and level crown and polish. And uh, this is how quick we do this. Take this strap off, loosen this strap off, take that off, then we lift off our buckshot bag, we slide off the mini neck assembly, just set that down for a second there, and then we'll slide the regular neck assembly into place. Now we're ready to level crown and polish. I, I do like to lift up the neck. When I'm doing fret work, I like to get my nose right in there and be able to eye the length of the neck as I'm working. The V blocks open up and spread across the central pivot point. Then the entire neck assembly pivots and finds its own center. Pretty simple stuff. Now, no, the file is dead flat. The fingerboard has a radius it's up to you to get it right. So what you got to do is you got to chase that radius. You, the, 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 you can see that there's, you can hear that there's almost no resistance on that file. These frets are pretty well perfect uh, right out of the gate. But I still need to dress very lightly. So I'm, I'm going to cross hatching, right? So I'm, I'm going over the radius like so. and. Even though I'm moving obliquely across the fret, like on an angle like that, I still keep the file in line with the trajectory of the string path. So I'm not doing this. The file does not do this. It follows just like the strings do. And I'm overlapping. This is done now. This is like perfectly level. Uh, another tip for people doing fret work that are new at it. Um, uh, two rules. The first fret is the only fret that's allowed to be a little too high. The last fret is the only fret that's allowed to be a little too low. The rest of them need to be dead level. Sorry I'm gloating, but this is the definition of a flawless fret job. There's no... But uh, yeah, we've done the math and calculated the exact spot that the center of that saddle should go. This positioning will give the customer enough real estate in the saddle to be able to use whatever gauge string he wants and uh, be able to tune it to concert pitch or if he wants to do drop D or whatever, this thing will be perfectly in tune. When I put that straight edge on the center of the board along the frets and I slide it to the bridge, it just kisses the edge of that bridge. It'll be super stable and you'll be able to adjust the action on that guitar anywhere you want it. Whether I'm holding this Gibson Flying V which had the neck busted right off and was completely re-glued, completely refretted. Or if I'm restoring this 1934 Martin, the guitar is held firmly, the body's not shifting, wobbling around while I'm, while I'm trying to work on the frets. This is the bridge slotting jig that I use with the Bosch Colt router to slot that bridge, locate it for perfect intonation, and slot it safely and precisely. Brand new ebony fingerboard, one piece end to end, 
the sustain on this thing. What gets me is even the first string. So all of that stiffness has been restored by one piece of ebony, end to end. Now we have that, that strength is back in me, along the length of the neck. No energy lost. It's such a grand voice for a tiny little guitar.